Now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jesus is watching. He's watching nonstop as people put money into the treasury. Maybe you've heard this sermon before about our giving. But Jesus is watching, staring intently at a steady stream of offering givers at the temple, and He is looking. He's looking for something. For something different than what we're looking for. We see rich folks. We see some big money. We see poor widows with very little. We guess at who's tithing and who's not, even though it's not required. And we lament that maybe some, some might be holding out, which is not good for them. And it certainly hurts the bottom line, if only. But Jesus has different eyes. He doesn't stare for no reason. He doesn't see and guess and measure, not as we do. Or to make a finer point, We don't see as Jesus sees, not anything close. He wasn't looking for giving units. He was looking for something rare, which is why he stares for so long. A very poor woman, a widow, like those whose houses have already been pilfered by quite an effective scribal program for temple fundings, Jesus sees she's not a good steward. Not to get where she's at with nothing. But she's the only person that day in the temple courts who knew what she was, along with all people really in the temple that day. That day, in line with others, she was walking toward her death. Contributing her last two coins, she throws her livelihood all she had to live on, which is really nothing, into the box. We'd quickly say, lady, just keep it. It's all you have. That guy wouldn't even bend over to pick it up. Just have another meal. She had nothing. Nothing of any consequence to us. And God does not need those mites. He is, after all, God. And now she will starve. She will die. Throwing in her last two mites is suicide. It's her hope for food. Today's and tomorrow's bread. The silent drama unfolds and no one but Jesus can see it in the temple. No more giving or doing or working from her. All of her poverty, everything she doesn't have, like a husband or more money, and everything she does have, like her loneliness, her life, her sin, and now her own death, are thrown into God's lap. But Jesus found that day in the temple, one day nearer to his own sacrifice once for all, And that offering was faith. It took him a long time to find it in the temple. We walk around as though faith is something grand, something we do and well. But in this, faith, in her faith, was total abandonment. This faith can even seem and be unpleasant. It's not just a letting go of yourself in painless little increments. No, we talk about dying to self, but we don't really mean it. What we mean is getting rid of those sins that we can live without. Or getting rid of those things that are holding us back from a fuller life anyway. But that, that that isn't death. That isn't dying to yourself. No, that is our pretense. 
our pretense of long robes and long prayers, and it looks and it sounds quite pious and religious, and none of it is. Jesus just stares at it, at you, at me. That's not what he will show his disciples. That's not what he will call to them to make sure they see. He's looking for the widow because, in truth, he knows who my gods are and yours, where we really do run to find comfort, what we really do trust and believe in with all our hearts. Faith, with Christ as its object, must be severe if it's going to fight the mighty enemies that Jesus lists here. Long robes, long covering prayers, pride in achievements, notoriety from other achievers, a desire for our own honor, our own excesses, our own favorite sins. And don't kid yourself that you can easily distinguish between the two, between pride and piety, and keep it all well sorted. Faith is throwing all of that and every other hope that you have to live into God's lap. Leaving yourself in certain peril like the widow, and then you'll know who you are, what you are. Poor, miserable, sinful, dead, dust and ashes at your best, and none of it is of any use to anyone but Jesus. Ah, but Jesus... A widow in the temple, and Jesus sees. Do you see? You've come to this place. It looks like it has nothing going on either. At least the world would say the Christian church looks nothing more like a widow. The world hears about the much type returning bride of Christ. And it has to laugh. She's not resplendent. She's not glorious. Her stained glass windows are cracked. Her plaster is falling down. Her numbers continue to dwindle. No, the church is dying, that bride of Christ. The bride's husband, well, he's really dead too, the world says. Jesus did not rise, they say, but even parts of the Christian church want to live as a widow too insisting, confessing that the bridegroom, Christ the husband, really is absent from his gifts. No flesh, no incarnation, no body, no blood, just a memorial, a remembrance. So, ask a widow, a real widow, if a symbol, if a memory if a memorial, if a picture with a pretty frame is enough. If it's the same as having her husband beside her to hold her, is it? Not by a long shot. What you see isn't necessarily what is, but what Jesus sees He takes it all in, the whole scene. He sees the scribes and the discount Pharisees dying for just a little more respect or authority, longing to do good and looking good doing it. All with a winning program of house confiscation to fund it. But these, he says, these will receive a greater condemnation. Ooh. And Jesus, oh, he sees coins. We see them too. We see those two coins and we think we know how to count them. In the very next verse that we didn't hear, Jesus sees great buildings. The whole temple complex improved and paid for by the generous, rich, and set-upon widows. Now do you see these great buildings historic and grand in appearance? Because not one stone will be left upon another, all of it thrown down. Magnificent looking temples downtown Jerusalem, you see, are not the point. 
but God's earthly place for blood and sacrifice. His death on a cross bringing you the forgiveness of sins for the sake of Christ. That is the point. Do you see like God sees? See the crucifixion? Not so beautiful. Your God is the Lamb, taking sins from the world from you. See bread and wine on the altar here. God gives you His Son. See that worthless widow, impractical for our grandiose plans. Christ sees a broken creation, certain death turned to certain life, where the worthless widow and all you helpless are finally helped. So much of what is the very things of God look like nothing. Long robes, longer prayers, big donations. Oh, I know how to measure those. But they end up being what they always were. Temporary in their honor, eternally massively irrelevant. Nothing is forever but Christ. Let me say that one more time. Nothing is forever but Christ. Serving you with everything through a cross forever here. His own robe covering you. His own home constructed for you with a place for you. His greeting in the market is for you. His feast is set for you. And for you, He is a best seat. A place of honor. By faith, you then throw in your dead and meaningless life into God's Son here. As you hear His Word, as you are invited to His table, come, eat, drink the forgiveness of your sins. We will bring our nothing and end up with His everything. His love incarnate. That's exactly what we need to see. Exactly what Jesus has given us to look for. Jesus is yours forever. By faith, receive Him and all the gifts that He gives. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Now may the peace that passes understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.